Rivian just unveiled their new R2 SUV, which should be available in 2026 and be powered by large 4695 cylindrical battery cells in what their CEO described as a highly structural battery pack. Follow along with me as I discuss Rivian's new battery and structural pack technology and compare that to Tesla's 4680 battery and structural pack technology. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. Rivian currently uses Samsung SDI 2170 battery cells in their R1T, R1S vehicles. But with their next generation compact SUV, the R2, they're switching over to a larger cylindrical 4695 cell. In addition, like Tesla, Rivian plans for these large cylindrical battery cells to be part of a structural battery pack of sorts. However, as I will discuss near the end of the video, Rivian's design appears to still have modules and separate structural members built into the battery housing, so I don't see this battery pack design being quite as space efficient as Tesla's design, but I'll talk more about that later. Here's a clip of Rivian's CEO describing their new batteries and battery pack. A lot of work went into driving manufacturing cost efficiency, and it's built around a, a 4695 cell, so 40, it's a cylindrical cell, 46 millimeters in diameter, 95 millimeters tall. It's a much larger cell than the 21 millimeter diameter uh, cell that we have in, in R1 today. And that cell's integrated into a highly structural battery pack. So the battery pack in the floor actually makes up a, a big part of the vehicle structure. The top of the battery pack is actually the floor of the vehicle. So a lot of these innovations that we're driving into how we build the vehicle are you know, core to us making sure the price point can be really affordable. And we'll get to that later. When a company like Tesla brings out a new technology, for example, their 4680 batteries, a lot of companies take note. And somebody like Rivian has taken to really copying Tesla's idea here with a large cylindrical cell and a structural battery pack of sorts. Because it's a great design. When you think about when you're designing a battery pack with thousands of individual little uh, 2170 battery cells, or in the case of the Model S and X, 18650 cells, small little battery cells, you have to weld and assemble a lot of those batteries together. However, with the 4680 batteries, or in the case of Rivian, 4695 battery cells, there are quite a few less battery cells in a battery pack to meet that same capacity, which means it's a lot more simple to assemble that battery pack. So it makes a lot of sense why a company like Rivian would copy Tesla on this particular design. But does it appear like Rivian's new 4695 battery cells will have any benefit over Tesla's 4680 battery cells? Well, to answer that question, I believe it's first important that we talk about the size of the battery cells and really what that means. When we talk about Tesla's cylindrical battery cells, we use numbers 18650, 2170, 4680. Those numbers just simply give the diameter and the height of the battery cell. So for example, a 4680 battery cell has a cell diameter of 46 millimeters and 80 millimeters of height. These larger 4680 battery cells obviously store a lot more energy per battery cell than the smaller 2170 and 18650 battery cells. So there's an obvious benefit there that you need less battery cells per battery pack. Rivian has taken that same diameter, that 46 uh, millimeter diameter, but they are going to be using battery cells that are around 15 millimeters taller. Now on the surface, just simply making a battery cell 15 millimeters taller just seems like a small tweak in the design. However, when you look at the actual volume that that potentially opens up for the battery cell, just changing the height by 15 millimeters actually increases the available volume in the battery cell by around 18.75%. This means that with all things being equal, for example, if Tesla took their 4680 battery cell and made it 15 millimeters taller with the same basic chemistry and same basic design, that would allow for almost 19% more energy per battery cell, at least theoretically. A good way to illustrate how much of a difference a 15 millimeter taller battery cell would make a difference when it comes to the range of an electric vehicle if you, for example, took Tesla's first generation 4680 equipped Model Y and you replace those 4680 battery cells with 4695 battery cells with the same battery chemistry and the same battery cell design, that vehicle could theoretically have gotten around 330 miles of range without improving the energy density of the battery cells as compared to 279 miles of range with the 4680 battery cells. However, it is important to note that Rivian is playing catch up here. 
By the time that Rivian brings out their first generation of their structural battery pack design and their 4695 battery cells, which I don't believe will be built by them, I'll discuss that shortly. But nonetheless, by the time they bring out that technology, Tesla will already be on probably their third iteration of both designs. So Tesla will likely already be generations ahead of Rivian's technology when they release that in 2026. With that being said, I want to discuss the important topic of energy density. But before I do that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Joa, one of the world's leading providers of quality Tesla accessories designed to enhance your Tesla driving experience. Whether you own a Model 3, Y, S, or X, Joa has you covered with many great products, including their center console tray organizers to help keep your center console neat and clean. They're all weather floor liners with anti-skid backing and hook and loop fasteners for a secure fit, a wireless game controller that's designed to take your Tesla arcade gaming experience to the next level, or for example, their foldable car tray that is easy to open and fold and conveniently stores in the Model 3 or Y front trunk or under the seats of a Model X or Y. Find these and many other great accessories for your Tesla by going over to joa-life.com forward slash cleanerwatt and using this link will automatically load in the discount code cleanerwatt which will save you 5% off your purchase. I will put this link in the video description below and do note that I do earn a commission on any Joa purchase you make using this link, which does help support this channel. Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cells were quite a bit of a disappointment. Not only did the 4680 equipped Model Y only offer up to 279 miles of range due to less than impressive energy density, but the vehicle charges quite slowly as well. However, now with the Tesla Cybertruck, they are using their new second generation Cybercells, which are 10% more energy dense than the previous generation of 4680 batteries. In addition, at their Cato Road facility, Tesla is currently working on their third generation of battery cells, which I expect to be at least 10% more energy dense than even their second generation Cybercells. So even if we knew the energy density of Rivian's battery cells right now, we would have to compare them likely to a future number because Tesla is currently working to improve the energy density of their battery cells. So for example, based on information that I've discussed previously, the estimated cell level energy density of Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cells was around 232.5 watt hours per kilogram. Based on a 10% increase, I estimate that Tesla's new cyber cells have an energy density of around 256 watt hours per kilogram. However, based on information that was shared by Joe Tegmeyer on X.com, and I discussed this in a previous video, Tesla is reportedly going to be switching over to a higher nickel battery chemistry, and they're going to be using something called asymmetric lamination. According to Joe Tegmeyer's post, once again on X.com, it looks like with these two technologies together that the estimated energy density increase of their battery cells could be around 10 to 20%. So if we just stick with that lower estimate, a 10% increase with their third generation battery cells with these changes, Tesla's third generation of 4680 battery cells very well could have an energy density of around 282 watt hours per kilogram. So if this is the case, if Tesla's third generation 4680 battery cell is indeed able to have an energy density over 280 watt hours per kilogram, this is going to be very impressive and very likely Rivian's first generation iteration of their 4695 battery cells will not have an energy density that high. Maybe they'll surprise me and I'll be wrong on this, but very likely it will be lower than this. And that means that for a battery pack to have a similar battery capacity, that battery pack for Rivian would be heavier if it does not have as good of an energy density as Tesla's 4680 battery cell. Okay, now I want to discuss how I don't believe that Rivian will be building these 4695 battery cells themselves, but rather will be buying them from a battery supplier, and this should give Tesla a marked advantage over them when it comes to cost. As you know, Tesla is building their own 4680 battery cells in-house with their proprietary dry electrode manufacturing process and with a tabless cell design. Even though Tesla has had a lot of struggles trying to mass produce these battery cells, they do appear to be on the right track and they're making great progress. Fully ramped up though, Tesla's process should be faster and more cost effective than the traditional wet process and typical tabbed cell design. 
And in addition to their battery cell design, they're about to open up their new lithium refinery. So they're going to be refining their own battery grade lithium and they're nearing completion of their cathode materials facility there at Gigafactory, Texas. So not only are the battery cells themselves being made in house, but at least a portion of the cathode materials and the lithium used in their batteries will be produced in house as well. Building batteries in house, of course, has the benefit of a lower cost because you're not having to pay another company's markup on that product. And in addition, Tesla will benefit from the IRA battery manufacturing credit. Rivian, on the other hand, is almost certainly not going to be building these 4695 batteries themselves, but will rather be buying them from a supplier. Rivian's current battery supplier, Samsung SDI, will likely supply these 4695 battery cells to Rivian because it was previously reported that the Korean battery maker planned to make 4695 battery cells. And in August of last year, it was reported that they were expanding a battery facility in Hungary for 46 millimeter cylindrical cell manufacturing. While Rivian does have an internal cell development team, as was reported in this uk.investing.com article, Last year, Rivian laid off a bit less than 8% of their cell development team and a Rivian spokesperson mentioned that they were pausing in-house cell development and focusing their team on R2 development. Rivian's cell team will instead focus on cell chemistry development and work with manufacturing partners as opposed to actually building battery cells themselves. So while Rivian will likely influence the chemistry used in the 4695 battery cells, since they're likely not going to be building them in house, this means they're not going to benefit from the cost savings associated with that like Tesla is. And anytime a company has a cost advantage over the competition, that gives them a lot more leverage. So for example, Tesla can either make more profit per vehicle if they're able to build that vehicle for a lower cost than Rivian, or they can lower the cost of that vehicle to sell more of those vehicles. Okay, now let's briefly talk about structural battery pack design. Tesla is on the second generation of their structural battery pack design with the Cybertruck. And by 2026, they very well could be using a Gen 3 design. Rivian, on the other hand, will just be starting at generation one of their structural battery pack design. In addition, if you look at this graphic that Rivian presented during the unveiling of their R2 and R3 vehicles, you can see that this battery pack appears to have three large modules with structural members separating each module. The pack enclosure looks to be a major part of the pack structure, thus the battery cells themselves actually make up less of the structural portion of the pack, unlike Tesla, where the battery cells themselves are taking more of the load. Tesla's structural battery pack does not have these same structural members, and while it does look like it's assembled in four separate sections, and I wouldn't even call these four sections necessarily modules, because when the battery pack is completely assembled, it is covered with a pink foam and becomes one big battery brick. So just based on a surface look here, it looks like the Rivian battery pack design should be less space efficient than Tesla's design. With that being said, I am extremely excited about the Rivian R2. It looks like an amazing vehicle, and I'm glad that Rivian is switching over to large cylindrical battery cells and a structural battery pack of sorts. But nonetheless, when it comes to the battery packs, once again, I believe that Tesla will have a huge cost advantage over Rivian, and since Tesla's design appears to be a more efficient packaging of the battery cells into the battery pack, I believe Tesla will have a pack level energy density benefit over Rivian, which allows for lighter vehicles with the same battery capacity. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to Joa for sponsoring this video. If you use the link that I'm going to put in the video description, you can save 5% off your Joa purchase. And since Joa gives me a commission off of your purchase at no extra cost to you, when you purchase using that link, it helps support this channel. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.